This is your WFHR Daily News Roundup for locally grown radio 97.5 FM and 1320 AM and West Country 105.5 FM WIRI in Wisconsin Rapids. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Wisconsin has had 24 tornadoes already this year. The latest confirmation was from Monday in Colby. There were only 23 tornadoes all of last year, which is average. The record for tornadoes in a season in Wisconsin was 62 in 2005. Even with high prices, Wisconsin is reporting a record number of home sales so far this fiscal year. The Wisconsin Housing and Economic Development Authority reports 2,700 single-family home sales so far this fiscal year. That's more than twice as many in all of fiscal 2023. Former UW Lacrosse Chancellor Joe Gao says making online porn is no reason for him to lose his tenured faculty post. Yes, my wife Carmen Wilson and I created a series of sexually explicit videos and books. We did so on our own time using our own money. A disciplinary hearing for Gao is in its second day. Interim Chancellor Betsy Morgan says she's lost all trust in him. My level of trust and the ability for him to be able to be an effective faculty member is very low. And my level of trust for him to sort of protect the university's best interests is low. Gao says he's not being treated fairly. The state law library will be renamed for Lavinia Goodell, the first woman lawyer in Wisconsin. Goodell moved to Wisconsin in 1871 and drafted a bill to guarantee women the ability to practice law in Wisconsin, which became law in 1877. The law library was named for former conservative Justice David Prosser. Turning waste from factory farms into fuel may not be the green energy boon its supporters say it is. Chris Hunt is a researcher for the Socially Responsible Agriculture Project. He says biogas doesn't solve the problem. If we put money toward biogas, we're essentially helping to subsidize and further entrench industrial livestock production. Biogas supporters say anaerobic digesters can be responsibly regulated. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WFHR and WIRI News, I'm Melissa Kay. A 27-year-old man died after crashing his motorcycle in the town of Carson early yesterday morning. The Portage County Communications Center received the call from an Alliant Energy worker a little after 1 a.m. Wednesday morning. A power outage happened about an hour earlier along County Highway G. The worker found the motorcycle had crashed into a utility pole, and they found an unresponsive male near the motorcycle. Responding deputies and emergency units determined the man had been traveling southbound on G, lost control on a curve near Oriel Road, entered the west ditch, and struck the utility pole. The 27-year-old man from Millador was not wearing a helmet at the time of the crash and died on the scene. Area June dairy breakfasts happen this Saturday at Alexander Field in Wisconsin Rapids from 8 to 11 and at Iggy's Trucking LLC in Pittsville from 7 to 11. Playgrounds in the WRPS School District will be receiving upgrades. The district has been awarded a grant from the Legacy Foundation to assist in upgrading all of their playgrounds. Work will start first with Grant and Mead Elementary, Pitch Early Learning Center, and the Wisconsin Rapids Area Middle School. Improvements at these schools will be completed by the beginning of next school year. During the summer of 2025, improvements will be done at Grove, Howe, and Washington Elementary and Think Academy. The district is investing $1.35 million into the projects, and Legacy has committed an additional $3.75 million for these upgrades and improvements to the playgrounds. Access to these areas will be limited while work is underway. The Mead Wildlife Center is celebrating 65 years. You can visit the Education and Visitor Center in Millador on Saturday, June 22nd from 9 to 1 for the celebration. Over 800 children's books were given away during the United Way's Great Book Giveaway. The event wrapped up on the 18th, with 301 kids taking home 832 books. These books will help the children stay up to speed on their reading during their time away from school. The United Way of Southwood and Adams Counties hosted their 15th annual Great Book Giveaway from June 10th through the 18th. At each event, kids could choose free books to take home and keep as their own. Children who read in the summer are less likely to fall behind when the new school year begins. Need brats? The Central Wisconsin High School Trap Team Booster Club is selling them tomorrow through Sunday to raise money for the Clay Target League Nationals in Michigan next month. You can head over to 998 Ranger Road, June 21st through the 23rd. 
It's 10 to 5 on Friday and 8 to 5 this weekend. The Independence Day celebration is two weeks from today for the city of Wisconsin Rapids. On Thursday, July 4th, fireworks will be launched from the Wisconsin River in downtown Wisconsin Rapids. DJ Entertainment Engines will start the music at 6 p.m. Food and refreshment vendors will be set up along West Grand Avenue on the west side of the river and on 2nd Street South on the east side. The Wisconsin Rapids City Band will perform outside of the Centralia Center from 7 to 8, and Miss Wisconsin Rapids teen Addison Morin will sing the national anthem immediately before the fireworks begin. The display will start around 9.30 p.m. and will be visible along most of the riverbank and downtown area. Starting yesterday, lactating dairy cattle need to be tested for bird flu before coming to fairs. It's required by the Wisconsin DATCP to limit the spread of H5N1 in dairy herds. And that's what you need to know. I'm Melissa Kay, WFHR and WIRI News. The Brewers win another series. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Brewers beat the Angels 2 to nothing in a pitcher's duel between Freddie Peralta and the Angels' 34-year-old lefty Tyler Anderson. Top of the eighth, Willie Adamas up to bat on Bally Sports, Wisconsin. Angels have been working around Adamas in this game to face Hoskins. Base open at first, and now Adamas, a broken bat, little flare, left field. That's going to bounce fair. Yelich will score, and Willie Adamas picks up a big stake. It's a broken bat arm. RBI single makes it two to nothing Brewers in the eighth. Tonight, the crew are in San Diego to open a long four game series against the Padres. NFL. Former tackle David Bakhtiari on ESPN asked, What does he think of the Packers' new quarterback, Jordan Love? Uh, Jordan, I mean, I got to be honest with you. I, I think the guy's a stud. I think he is going to get paid. I, you know, they, they may have already even pretty much agreed. They're just probably just waiting and fine tuning like the last little bits there of their deal. Like, the, the guy's like, you you just love those kind of like his personality and the kind of dude he is. He is quiet yet confident and soft spoken yet caring. Um, I got a chance to get you know somewhat close to him. His girlfriend, who I hope that he you know can speed it up and you know make it his fiance pretty soon. She's amazing. So shout out Ronica. You know, again, you you just root for guys like him. So I, he he, I think he's growing and ascending in this league. I think he's going to be a really good quarterback that's going to lead the team. And I still think the same thing. I think that they'll. They'll make the playoffs for sure, and then from there, depends on what happens. And if they play the Cowboys, then, I mean, that probably will bode well for them. That's David Bakhtiari. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Do you have a child named after a Disney character? A lot of people do. Nevada is the number one state with Disney-inspired baby names. The New York Post reports New York is the ninth most Disney-influenced state. The name Ariel has been near the top of the list since The Little Mermaid. Names that are nearly extinct include Kathy, Al, Mitzi, and Vern, according to baby names experts at Namesbury. One expert says parents are trying to give their kids names that will stand out on Instagram. Other popular names of Disney characters that are given to kids these days are Coda, Moana, Flynn, and Elsa. What better way to make a kid aspire to one day becoming a cartoon character? If you're like Nick Cannon, you give your kids names like Powerful Queen, Onyx Ice Coal, or Zion Mixolydian. Man, I hope those kids are in private school. Cannon probably had no idea when assigning names to his offspring that they will have to spell their name every single time they meet someone or call customer service. Suddenly, Vern doesn't sound so bad. Steve Martin says he doesn't like being in comedy clubs anymore because they remind him of his old stand-up days when he was starting out. Martin says when he walks into comedy clubs now, he can still taste the cheap wine in his mouth. Martin sat down with Oscar-winning documentarian Morgan Neville in L.A. to discuss his documentary, Steve, a documentary in two parts. The first part of the documentary covers Martin's days working at Disneyland and doing stand-up comedy. The second part covers his film career. It's really insightful and a great watch. Netflix is about to become more than virtual. The streaming service is looking to open up two entertainment complexes. Variety says they are being called Netflix Houses, and they will be located in Pennsylvania in a town called King of Prussia, please change that name, and Dallas, Texas. Netflix houses will try to enhance the overall Netflix experience for consumers with pop-up live experiences of shows like Stranger Things and Squid Game. In a related story, Netflix is raising their monthly fee to $4,000. How does Usher stay in shape? He follows in the footsteps of his grandma. The pop star recently talked about his diet and exercise routine with the Wall Street Journal and says he credits his physique to meditation and starts his days with a drink consisting of celery juice, cayenne pepper, ginger lemon, and water, followed by a session of yoga. The pop icon also says he fasts on Wednesdays because that's what his grandma did. Isn't that sweet? And yeah, not eating? Great way to keep the weight off. Fans of The Apprentice or of its demise might enjoy a new book called Apprentice in Wonderland, which is now available. 
Variety reports that the book details on-set meltdowns by host Donald Trump, which include racial slurs and storming off the set. The former president also claims that Deborah Messing was not only in love with him, but so, so thankful for the ratings lead-in The Apprentice provided for her show, Will and Grace. Since Trump said it, it must be true, except that it's not because Will and Grace was on before The Apprentice. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. With your forecast, I'm Corey Hartman. Mostly cloudy today, a high near 70 degrees. Showers and thunderstorms are likely this afternoon. For tonight, mostly cloudy, scattered storms, a low of 57. For Friday, showers and maybe a thunderstorm, a high near 72. On Saturday, scattered storms and 78. It's 60 at our studios. That's your WFHR and WIRI Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WFHR.com or Wiscountry. That's W-I-S-Country.com.